Do you have COVID-19 fatigue? 10 ways to cope with that. Today, I'm very excited about that <laughs> on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 162. You can find all of our show notes over at wbnopodcast.com. Jenna Brian, let me be, well, probably the first to actually wish you a happy Earth Day 2021. So, yes, that's all right, a good thing. Thank you. As we record, it is Earth Day. And what are you? I'm actually going to go celebrate Earth Day today. I decided after I put together our topic today on ways to cope with COVID fatigue, because I think we all have it. We do. I am definitely, and it's Earth Day, and it's a gorgeous day here in beautiful, sunny, the sunshine state of Florida. I am going to get up and get out and go do some work someplace else other than my house, other than my house. Wow, okay, so that's cool. So you're, you're, you're not taking the day off from work. You're going to go work out in nature. Yeah, like what we used to do, Matt. If we were together somewhere, we would be going. I, I want to go do one of those things. I wanna, we're, I'm working on some scripts, right, for some things we're going to record. And I'm going to be inspired to get that in a different location where I'm outside. I'm going somewhere. I don't even know where yet, but I'm going to do it. I love that. I think that is the perfect way to celebrate Earth Day. All right, exactly. I'm going to go enjoy the Earth somewhere near me. <laughs> Very good. And what about you? Well, I always get up and get out every day, so I'm going to go for my normal walk. But I was thinking today I'm going to do a little bit more, uh, get off the streets and get out into the trails around our house. So get, get a little bit closer to nature. It is absolutely, and I've mentioned this in the last few weeks, gorgeous here in California. I love spring here. The mustard is crazy. It's just every hill is yellow. It's beautiful. So um, it's not going to be really too warm today. It's kind of a cooler day, which I love. So it's perfect. Okay. That's my plan. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, tune in, and you can watch us on YouTube. Well, we all, so we're going to talk about these 10 ways. I, I, I got inspired to talk about this because I was just, you know, I, felt, I, I woke up this morning and I felt, you know, really in a positive, I felt more positive for some reason. And I realized that we have been doing so much collectively as a, you know, society and dealing with so many things. And I, and I, and, and I felt we can feel isolated, right? And I work out of the, you and I both work very isolated out of the home. And, yep. and I just started to brainstorm on this and also recognize some of the things I have changed in my life that have helped me. So anyway, I did a little research, uh, kept finding the same things. And so none of this is going to be earth shattering or news to anyone, but I still think it's powerful to share uh, maybe our thoughts on what all the health experts and the mental health experts and, you know, just I, every site I went to had all the same things on it. And we'll throw our own little WBNL coaching version of that in there as well. Love it. Okay? And it is National Park Week, so it I, is thought, we, I thought we could talk a little bit about that as well. So, all right, let me jump in and I will cover the 10 ways to cope with COVID fatigue. And every expert that I came across, every university site, I mean, just Google COVID fatigue and what to do about it and you'll see what I found. And it was exercise. Exercise always for anybody that's having issues with anything like depression or any kind of issues. Um, Exercise is the number one method, even just simply taking a daily walk, which, you know what, Matt Emerson, you're my hero about that because you really do do that. Don't yeah, you? I do. Yep. I do not. Would you say that is something that really helps you? 100%? It helps me in many ways. It helps me mentally. It helps me physically. It helps me sleep better. It, I mean, everything about it is great. So exercise doesn't have to be going to the gym and doing all this. It could be simply going outside and taking a walk. So now number two, my favorite, the morning routine practice ritual. Look, it doesn't matter what it is that you do. I, 
I went outside and did it today. I think I sent you a picture, Matt. Yeah, you did. Yeah. My sister Lorraine planted a garden. It's so awesome. She has a little backyard garden. And I helped her over the weekend. It was wonderful to do that. She went out. She's very got a, very much a green thumb, and she found uh, vegetables. We have like kale and arugula and cherry tomatoes planted in some very er miscellaneous herbs. Nice. And and then it rained for two days, so it, it's just been beautiful. And um. Unfortunately, not fortunately or unfortunately, I my uh, co the other co-host of the podcast is joining us. Everybody, this is Rufa, and she likes to sit right back here when I work. So <laughs> we're going to put her right that. there. She was just outside, and I knew she'd be back. Um, so the morning ritual is really, if you don't know one, I recommend. I always recommend Hal Elrod and Savers, which is simply silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise reading and scribing or journaling. You could do one or all of them, but go to Hal Elrod, go to My Miracle Morning, Morning, read that book. That guy has such an inspirational story. He's got podcasts. He's got everything. Just go check it out, but figure out what works for you. We've talked a lot about the morning ritual here. On we have. Podcast. And you know what, Jan, you, you know, you said you, that I was your, uh, walking, uh, uh, you know, inspiration. You have been my morning ritual inspiration. I do it every morning myself. Well, I don't really do it so much on the weekends because Laura and I are here and we do our own thing on the weekends. But Monday through Friday, I have a ritual and it has changed my day. So thank I, you. It helps my mindset and I just feel better. And that's how I start the day. And I, I change it up. I may just uh, read something. I may do a, a uh, meditation. I like listening to guided meditations it may be just, you know, doing some stretching and exercising. It's just something else than, than getting up in the morning and jumping right into reading, turning on the news or, you know, looking at your emails and jumping into all the work of the day. Number three, practice mindfulness. And all I wanted to say here is this is just an ongoing thing of this is the thing I want to share about this. To, mindfulness to me means being present, being in the moment, doing everything that you go about your day doing. If you think about being in the moment with it. So if I'm washing the dishes, I'm not thinking about the 10 things I need to do next. I'm literally stopping and being in the moment and just focusing on that activity that I'm doing. That's That keeps you focused in the present where a lot of stress and anxiety comes from, in my opinion, and all the things for me and from things I've studied and read is that you're either being your mind, your, your, you know, your monkey mind, that mind that's always, you know, trying to pull you away from the present moment is either pushing you back to things that happened in the past that you're ruminating on, or anxiety is coming from you're thinking about the future. And this thing, near future, long-term future, whatever it is, this pandemic has really made that come to light for so many people. Because if we sit in, you know, we're past a year now, we've all learned new habits and whether they're good or bad. And I frankly think I've, I've developed better habits because, yeah, I have too. you know, you could go down one path or the other where you could just self-isolate, but we've all tried to find collectively ways to stay communicating and ways to still be socially distant yet still socially connected, even if that meant Zoom meetings and I don't know. I, I feel like, you know, I have reconnected with people I haven't talked to in a long while. That right? absolutely is the case. So this mindfulness thing is don't be all focused about what you can't control, what's next, what's out there. It's it, it, Practicing mindfulness is being in the moment, and that can bring you some peace of mind. So can number four, gratitude. Uh, you know, I, I just do this informally. You can journal, um, but there's so much written on just having, finding something to be grateful for in every day, whether you do that in the morning or the evening or both. Um, you know, I like the idea of getting up in the morning as part of the morning routine and part of journaling is what am I grateful for? What's something positive I can focus on for the day or just be thankful for? Just say a thankful gratitude, you know affirmation about it. And at the end of the day, even if you had a crazy day and all these things were happening, there has to be something positive or something that you're grateful for. Even if it was the lesson that you're learning in the the drama or the strife or the challenging situation that you're in, right? You know so, what? Yeah, it's true. And you know what? You can take the gratitude one step farther, actually, too. If it's some, if someone touched you that you know, you know, write them a personal note, thank them, tell them that it made a mm -hmm. difference in their life. And, and if you are out somewhere in the public and you come across someone that has done exceptional service, go to their website and just give them a review. You know, Honestly, I, 
I, I, I have to tell, I think I might've told this story when I had my first COVID shot. Uh, the girl that was there kind of monitoring everyone's, you know, 15 minute waiting time afterwards. Yeah. Was she must, she was 17 if she was a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? She wasn't even from the store that I uh, went to. She was from a, I went to a CVS. She was from a different CVS. They called her in because it was the first, you know, couple of days of them doing the, the vaccine there. And she was so engaging. She engaged. She talked to everybody that was there. She started talking about everyone's pets. She would ask, so do you have pets? Because every, if everybody does, practically, you know what I mean? And all and of a calm. sudden, here, here we all are, this little group of people all talking to each other about pets while we're wow. waiting around. I mean, it was incredible. So I actually, you know, they brilliant. CVS is great about sending surveys out. So they sent a survey out about the the um, the, vac the uh, vaccination. And I said, I want to tell you, I want to, you know, pay homage to, you know, it was. It, and I got a response back from the manager of the store, you know, it's just thank you for that. And saying, I, you know, I told her about your comment and she was thrilled with that. I mean, it was really cool. So it not only made me feel better, I know that it touched other people's lives as well. So it's cool. That is brilliant. And Matt is so good at the whole uh, sending a, a personal note and it's so heartfelt and people don't get them and it means the world, but just think about what you did to check to, for that. I, nobody probably takes the time to do something like that and what it did for everybody that laid that girl, that young girl, reinforcing her and then her continuing that behavior right and and then impacting the people that she works with that's powerful stuff Matt. because i'll I tell you it. that was a that was a i don't think it was stressful necessarily but there was anxiety around all of that for everybody that's going in to get their shot right and yeah, she am i going to have a reaction to this yeah, she completely diffused that situation for that 15 minutes we weren't thinking covid at all we were thinking about our animals. So it was really cool. Super, super cool. And you talk about building instant rapport. Well done. Wow. Okay. That, thank you for sharing that. And that's what we're talking about. Finding those things. They're everywhere. There's they all are. kinds of good things happening. And everyone, you know, it's not all doom and gloom, right? So number five is daily self-care. And I put this in here because I think a lot of us, as we get back to whatever the new normal is going to be, and kind of hate that whole new normal, but Frankly, it's never going to be like it. Was, but we've been right? using it for a year, so you know. I know, but 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 anyway, it, it's different. There's just different situations, and we're not all going to go back to exactly how everything was. And that includes the way that you take care of yourself. So there, I personally feel I have done better with this move, and I'm staying with my sister, and we eat healthier. They're vegetarian here. Um, I drink more water. I've got this awesome hydrate thing right here, which has an app that tells me, and I get these cool little texts that tells me, um, it's time to drink more water. They're really cute. They're snarky little things like, you know, little sayings and so forth. And it's it say something like drink, drink some more water, you old prune. That's yeah. It, do, it does say things like that. You can choose when you set it up. It's hydrate with an I H I D R A T E. We all have them here. You carry it around with you. And I'm telling you, I never had so much water and eating healthier but even even getting up and getting dressed, okay, but I have certainly, you know, developed a new, um, I may put on, you know, if I'm doing a Zoom, I think we're all doing this, right? This is the joke. I may have a more professional uh, top on or something, but I certainly don't have my slacks on, you know, I have, I might be in shorts. So I don't know, there is something in the mental, mentally about getting up and suiting up, not suiting up, you know, but you know what I mean? Like getting into the mindset to go to your, to your job, even if it's uh, working from home. So make sure you're doing that. You know, the, have you made those adjustments? If not, are things that you can do to, in, to increase um, your self-care? Okay. I have something to add to that. I, right, haven't, I haven't shared this with you, Jan O'Brien, but okay. I'm going to share this with you and anybody that's listening out there. And um, if you're Watching on the video, you're going to get to see that if, if this, if um, you're you're listening to us on just the you know audio, then I'll, we'll tell you what's going on. But I couldn't agree with you more when it comes to the whole getting dressed thing, because as COVID went on, I mean, here's the thing: we work from home all the time, so literally sure. COVID didn't change all that. But I I was better about getting up and taking a shower and doing all my stuff before COVID. I don't know what happened. I, I felt like it, I'm I guess saying. You know what? I think people were just talking about it more, maybe. I don't know what it was. And I found myself being in sweats until like 10 and, oh, it's okay. I'll just put a hat on today. And it's like, you, I got more lazy about that, right? 
Yeah. Um, so I started backing up and started doing things more. And you know what I found to be the one clothing item that makes me feel like I am at work? What? I'm going to show you. I put on shoes. <laughs> I don't. I am barefoot right now. I wear, I, I'm always barefoot. I mean, literally, I don't ever put shoes on. It, it, you know, if I go outside, I'll put on some, you know, sandals or something. But I never wear shoes. And I found that putting on shoes made me feel like I was yeah. going to work and feeling more professional. Brilliant. And shoes are my thing. So I put on shoes every morning. And so, when I when I'm done with my Zooming and podcasting, I'm just getting into, you know, some more technical work. Off come the shoes. You know what? That is just, thank you for sharing that because that is what has happened. We have got maybe in some of us, and I'm one of those have fallen into a pattern of not doing a lot of, you know, personal hygiene, getting yourself, it's a mindset thing to get not just hygiene, but getting yourself ready and getting up and going because you could be in sweats all day and, and get away with it. Right. And we wouldn't do that if we were back going into the job. And then many no. of us are going to continue to work from home. But even when we were working from home more, I would still get up and start my day that way because yeah. that's what I did for years in corporate that's right. world. Right? So very interesting. Takes a while so to unwind then, that. That's true. Yeah. All right. So daily self care and your, you know, what, how are you taking good care of yourself all the way around? Number six is what are you listening to or reading? And I think I have definitely, man, I'm so happy about how I have disconnected from news and negative sort of information. I don't really want, I don't even really spend a lot of time going down the social media streams. I do more for learning and, and what we're doing in our business and so on. And I've started reading a little bit more. I, I'm a, we've talked about this before, Matt. I'm, I'm, I'll share with what I'm reading, but, and I also, because of some recent trips, got back into listening to podcasts, right? Yep. So the point here is find uplifting, positive, in for, you know, maybe things that are entertaining to you or make you smile and are happy and, and, or you're learning something, right? And we have so much that we can choose from podcasts. Clubhouse, if you're into Clubhouse and finding the channels that you want to listen to or maybe even get involved in a conversation on. Audible, if you don't want to read books. I, I prefer reading, though. So, uh, But I do like yeah. to listen to a lot of things. Um, there's so many cool YouTube channels, uh, background music. Matt, you always have some inspirational music on when you're working from home always. or Spotify channel. I think that makes a difference. Music can change your mood. Uh, so what are you listening to and what are you reading? Is there anything there you can share or is there any i mean is there any uh, things that you like what are you listening to now or reading that is no, I, you know i you know i am i'm a classical music uh person really i like to listen to classical music but i found lately i you know <laughs> this is anyone that listens to the show or knows me knows this you know i am a theme park fan not just disney but theme parks in general so i have found myself finding on youtube background music or area music in places like Disneyland or Universal Studios. And so it's it's background music. And a lot of it I recognize from just being in the park, but it just makes me happy. It makes me feel like it kind of takes me back just in the, you know, back a, a little bit back to my happy place. So I've been doing a lot of that lately, actually. It's interesting. Well, and I've discovered so much uh, th things that are available on YouTube. And we've listened to Yellow Brick Cinema, which I'll shout out to them, which is just a sweet live stream beautiful background music there's so much stuff that's out there that's on the the you know just instrumental music um oh my gosh i found so many cool things tibetan bells and just things that i like to to, to sometimes listen to just like you might listen to harry potter or something yeah i listen to harry potter all the time <laughs> um, you know so but find what that is because change sort of your whole brainwave pattern and what your what where your mind's at or there is a lot you know that whole thing all these things that have been written about classical music and mozart yeah listening to certain um music types of music can change the way you're feeling so and you know it's funny we were we talked back in um uh december during the holidays that i think we were both doing this you know they're listening they had those crackling fire videos you know that would have instrumentals yeah. behind well, yeah. we, i listen to a lot of that during that time of the year so um there's just so many options i mean literally just find your find your path and google it <laughs> you'll find some music on it. there's something for everyone and i just a shout out to this christine kane soul source entrepreneur i am so, i've talked about her before and i'm i'm I, i'm finally got back into reading the book and i'm listening to her podcast and i am 100 percent dialed into what this woman is sharing and uh highly recommend check out christine kane.com it's ch christine 
Kane. Uh, her book is awesome called The Soul Source Entrepreneur and her podcast. It's just awesome because it talks about blending. It, 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 it resonates with me because it's about strat business, being an entrepreneur and a business owner, the strategy, most people are talking strategy, 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 and you got to go do X, Y, and Z. And she brings the creative parts. She has the soul track and the strategy track, and it's brilliant. So I've been listening to her podcast. I'm back listening to social media marketing, which I love that podcast and all the fresh ideas about what's working and not working. Cause that's where we're in our business mindset on. And I uh, went back to John Lee Dumas, um, entrepreneurs on fire and he's wrote a book too. And uh, that's my next book. I'm going to read the common path to uncommon success. I heard him on a podcast and it was just awesome. I got the book, uh, very cool strategies there of just, he has a cool backstory and he has so many people that listen to him on his podcast. Um, it, you know, and this is the first book he's written. So there you go. Get motivated around that. And then number seven is focus on what you can control. No kidding. Right. This is that I spoke to it a little earlier, right. About man, we just all got caught up all of us collectively into the negative and the being torn apart. And there's so many still things that we're dealing with in our country and the world, but what, what can you can control? You know, and what you can control only is your attitude and your state of being. How are you feeling? How are you reacting to things today? Nothing that's happening outside of ourselves is causing us to feel angry or mad or this or that, you know, just on that level. I'm not talking about mental health issues or people that really have some chemical imbalances. Right. Right. I'm just talking, generally speaking, when someone says this situation or who's the president of the United States or that this or the pandemic is causing me to be blah, blah, blah. I just have a different feeling on that. And I think you can get up each day and you can decide how you're going to feel. And I'm not saying you have to put on a happy face every day and pretend you're happy. I'm just saying, acknowledge it and just decide what you're going to do to move you. And this is what we're talking about today. How do you move yourself back into a space that makes you happy? It could be That's listening right. to music. It could be taking a walk. It could be doing something that changes your state of being, right? And for me, it's new. It's less news and social media obsession. I have 100% done that. I'm so excited because now I have more time for, I'm not saying that I don't binge watch some things when I want to, when I, I work a lot, right? So when I'm shut down, if I'm not reading, I do like to discover a few things, but I've decided to watch different things. I can't tell you how many documentaries I've watched. Yeah. Okay. I just watched the whole thing on, uh, you know, uh, the Albert Einstein. You know, the gene, I rediscovered the genius um, things that came out from PBS. Um, you know, I, I just, I just went to one after night and documentaries interesting or things about nature interesting, not just, you know, dramas. And, but, you know, you, you know, what, on that note, it's really, do you have, you have Prime, right? Yes. Do you have Prime? Yeah. There, there is such a great collection of stuff on Prime. I have just gone in and, and, um, and gone into like old documentaries. I, I'm, I'm always been really a fast, a fascinated with like world's fairs and expositions and stuff like that. Yes. And there's a ton of them in there that are back from 1960, you know, talking about the New York world's fair, for example, it's really fascinating stuff uh, in a lot of ways. It's also fascinating to see the way people dress, the way people acted, right. you know, all of that, but it's really interesting. There's so much to watch on TV and you know, it doesn't have to just be a brain, you know, couch potato yeah. time. You can actually do some learning <laughs> in there. All right. I know hundred percent. So anyway, that you get the idea there. You're in control of, of, of those things to some extent you really are. You can choose what yeah. you're listening to and what sure. you're garbage in garbage out kind of scenario. Number eight, plan your next vacation or trip. Love Find that. something to look forward to. I have been doing this throughout the pandemic and it's little small things. It might've been a bigger trip or whatever, but now it's been like, I'm going to go visit my family in Tampa or, you know, we're going to a wedding and up in Asheville next month. You know, my great nephew, Charlie is coming out in July and I'm very excited about planning. He's going to spend a week with me here in Florida and we're going to go explore some things together, man. That is huge. Bringing me great joy and happiness. And it may not be what I, we were going to do. Uh, now, what, tell me what you guys are planning. Are you planning to go to uh, any national park? Or are you going to go to New York yet? Or Yeah, you know? we're, we're, we are going to New York. Back to New York in November. We really, really missed it this last year. And it's funny how we knew we were enjoying that. But when you don't have it, 
and your your routine changes, it was huge. So we're 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 back on that. We're actually doing a lot of research on that. It's just so funny. We were the other day we were talking about things, and uh, we were sitting, we were talking, and we're sitting in the same room, but we were both kind of looking at things online, and you know, do some. We were like texting each other. Let's do this. Let's do that. And then we would talk about it. it was kind of funny. It just made me laugh. At one point, we we're like, what? that that puts you into a better mindset. Uh, you're in the moment oh. planning something to look forward to. And even if it's months from now, and I know how you guys do it. You have this board that we can see over here to Matt yeah. as we're looking at Matt to Matt's left. He's got this giant cork board with, uh, you know, how they plan their trip out, which is just brilliant. That's like a thing you guys do. And, you know, do it, guys. Go figure out what you're going to do, no matter what it is, even if it's a staycation. Number nine, give back, right? There are so in our industry here, we are blessed in the real estate industry to have been able to not re to really find ways to persevere. And, and many people have had their best year ever. That's I mean, true. it's crazy. So what could you be doing to give back to others that are less fortunate in your community? What's your favorite charitable group or what thing are you passionate about? Or as one of my passions too, is how do you support local businesses? How do you get out and just, you know, a lot of local businesses that are storefronts are really struggling. They've been struggling through this whole thing. And, and now with things getting a little bit better and more people vaccinated, um, I'm about this, right? You go and find uh, places, restaurants or other coffee shops or whatever to support. And then of course we talk about on the channel all the time here, how to uh, promote that as part of your business strategies, right? Interviewing a local business owner right. and doing a video or a blog post and, and being all about supporting local, right? Yes. So, and then the last one, which is near and dear to our heart here at WBNL Coaching, we always say get up and get out. And it is, we're in the middle as we record this of National Park Week. I put a link to the to the uh, the national park site, which is all about things that are happening. There's still, if you're listening to this, uh, you know, when it comes live, there'll sp still be a couple days left in the national park. But yep. you know what? As far as I think Matt and I are concerned, every week is National Park Week. That is preach, right? Yep. So whether you go visit a park or a state park, or just get out on a bike or hike or an outdoor activity, or just go on a picnic or take a scenic drive, you guys do that all. all yeah, you, we do that a lot. That's been, our, that's been one of our COVID releases. Right, it's a COVID release. Take a scenic drive. So, can you share? Uh, let's. Why not, let me turn it over to you, Matt, to finish us up on the whole national park thing or other ideas people could do and anything else you want to talk about regarding just getting up and getting out. Well, just national parks in general, you know, they have been uh, hurt just like everybody else. And, you know, everyone, all the employees and I, just the parks in general over the last year, you know, with revenue not coming in and all of that. Right. Uh, and then they've all reopened as they've reopened, you know, setting their own standards and their own, uh, you know, uh, uh, capacity uh, regulations and stuff like that. But they're slowly all coming back. Kings Canyon was closed for almost a year and a half. They're now opening campsites up again. As a matter of fact, our, our wandering friends that go to Kings Canyon every year headed down there next week. We have an opportunity to possibly go up to, to visit them uh, or to stay with them for a couple days uh, right at the beginning of April. So we might be doing that. We have a little situation with the health thing with our uh, cats. So we might not be able to do that this year. But, but the fact of the matter is that they're starting to open back up again. So it's nice. super exciting. And here's the thing, no matter where you are in the United States of America, unless you live in Delaware, but that's okay because Delaware is so small that you're not too far from another state. Uh, every state in the United States has um, either a national park, a national monument, a protected forest, a national seashore, something like that. There's 423 protected areas in the United States that the, um, the National Park Service oversees. So you're not ever too far away from a national park. 63 of those are officially national parks. The last one that was uh, brought into the mix was um, the New River Gorge in West Virginia. Uh, that was back in 2020. I've been you know, reading up a lot on that since that happened. And I really knew I want to go there so badly. It just looks so incredibly beautiful. Um, there's a bridge that goes over that gorge, which is, a, I think it's the the longest arch state bridge in America and the third or the third largest one in America. I don't know. It's I, I'm kind of a bridge guy. So that 
appeals to me greatly. So, you know, there's a, a, a lot, uh, a lot to see out there and I cannot wait to get back to Sequoia again. And, mm. you know, Laura and I have been talking about, but actually we are, our, our 30th anniversary is coming up in October. Holy crap. So we were, um, and I wish I would have thought about this earlier, but COVID kind of messed this up because we love the Iwani Hotel in, uh, in oh, Yosemite yeah. Valley. And I, I, I got this idea. I'm like, oh, I'm going to book that and surprise Laura and we'll go there for our 30th anniversary. That'd be awesome. Well, they weren't taking reservations for the longest time. And then when, I don't know when I was trying to watch it really closely, but I failed in my quest here. Uh, not failed to get a room there, but to get the room that I really wanted to get um, to uh, uh, get on it the day they opened the reservations up. And then when I went there, that that was already booked. So anyway, that might be out. But anyway, the, uh, we can't wait to get back to that park. And there's just so many places we want to go and see again. And it's funny. Um, just last night, um, Sweet Pea was putting together a presentation for her class today uh, about it's, it's funny that it's funny. Well, about Earth Day, but really it was about national parks. It's kind of funny that you uh, talked about that this morning. Um, and she was putting out um, a PowerPoint together of all the parks of the West for her kids. And she was putting a lot of her pictures in there. And boy, oh boy, did that take us down memory lane. I don't think we went to bed last night until like one o'clock because we were just looking at pictures and, you know, and talking about things. And the, the diversity between the parks just in the West Coast of America is absolutely amazing. The, the rainforest, like up in Olympic National Park, it which is gorgeous, is so different than Yosemite or anywhere in the Sierra where it's much drier, you know. So I don't know. I could it, you can tell this always excites me, so I can go on and on and on and on. Point is, it. point is, you just need to get up and get out. That's <laughs> that's the fact of the matter. So right. But Matt, just the anticipation of being able to go back, you see how that just, Matt just is the epitome of what we've just been talking about today. Just the idea of planning a trip back to that, let alone to your beloved New York for the Thanksgiving holiday. Right. Um, is, is, creates a different energy and gets things firing, gives you something to look forward to and to focus on and have fun again. And it's all, it's, it, sometimes that is worth, it's worth the wait. Right. Because we're well, you know what? I and this is not, I don't want to say this is always true, but a lot of times the planning is almost more, more fun. I, I, mean, that's what I, I guess I was trying to say that because <laughs> there is for that, right? It really but, is. I mean, you know, I, you, you enjoy it when you're there, but you know what? Your time goes so fast and you're in the moment. Well, we all we are we'll make sure we're in the moment when we're there, you know what I mean? But it, then it's gone. But if you have seven or eight months up planning on something, I, I, it's just fun, you know. So and so let's let me do a shout out too because national parks there's definitely national parks here in Florida but there are I was just looking at it I've seen difference between uh, you know 175 official state parks and nine state trails in the state of Florida you know when you add in rec areas and preserves there's nearly 200 natural you know parks protected areas in the state of Florida and there's just anywhere you go there, you know, it's right around where I live. There's, there's so much I've already discovered and it's just exciting and to get out and just, you don't have to go drive an hour to be able to enjoy the outside and the earth and nature. Right. So I'll be doing that. I may do some of that today even, or definitely this weekend. That's cool. Excellent. Right. Well, that was an uh, and I think this kind of sums it up. And this is from Gandhi. And he said, Earth provides enough safety, uh, enough to satisfy every man's need, but not every man's greed. So wow. on this Earth Day, here are some things you can go out and do. Plant something. Just go out and plant something. Jan and Brian just talked about how they planted a whole garden. In their not, not only is that planting something, that's planting food for themselves. Yeah. What a great Good. thing. Get out and ride your bike or go for a walk. Let your voice be heard. If you are someone that it, be, that believes in what you're doing and believes in Earth Day and believes in climate change and believes in all of that, maybe this is the day you need to go do some posting on uh, social media just to kind of show that you are uh, in solidarity with that. Uh, that Use real, reusable bags. A lot of states have that mandated. California, I, when that happened in California several years back, you thought that the world was going to freaking end for people. Right. And now it's Everyone's no, big used to it. no big deal. And just mm -hmm. think of the waste that that has taken. Let's just out add all plastics, like stop yeah. using well, plastic that's hot true. water and use other things, like do things right. like this for your water. Okay. Yep. Love uh, it. To the gardening, you know, get your produce from a local farmer's market. Not only are you helping the farmers there, but it's, 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 it's fresher produce. So it's better. Do that. pardon me. It tastes better. 
It does taste better. Uh, shop smart for clothes, but not just clothes. Like Jan was just saying, shop smart for everything. You know, I mean, if you have the choice between two things and one is wrapped in all kinds of plastic and un unrecyclable stuff, then don't get that one. Get the other product. Get the product that's greener. It's it's going to be this just as good, and you're going to feel better about it if you're you know into the the whole environment thing. I love this one. Unsubscribe to catalogs. I don't know if yeah. you're on any catalog list, Jana. You no. only have to get on one. If you get on one, you're on ten. No. So unsubscribe from all those. Over and, and magazines, even I don't yeah. care about that anymore. Listen to this, kids. Over a hundred million trees a year are destroyed and turned into catalogs. Wow. Uh, so I think that should be something that should be at the top of everyone's list. And then the last one on the list here is Jan and I, are, we already talked about it. We're both going to do it today is to spend some time outside and get up and and get out. Yes. Feeling good about it. Any other last words of take wisdom? Take it outside. Ah, it outside. That's right. Take it outside. Take it outside. I'm going to take it outside today. All right, everybody. Get up. Get out mask up because you know there's still 48 percent of the people that are not at least have one shot in them so don't don't let your guard down and be forever wandering but not lost mm -hmm.